these are some of the clinical performance measures that you'll get in the pay for quality or the other bonus programs. As you can see, the vast majority of them come from NCQA HEDIS. It's another alphabet standing for the National Commission for Quality Assurance. HEDIS is the Health and Examination Data Information Set. But here are the things that you look at. All cause readmission on hospitals, medication reconciliation post-discharge from hospital, osteoporosis management in women with fractures, breast cancer screening, colorectal screening, care of older adults, medication review, pain assessment, controlling high blood pressure, retinal, making sure that your diabetics have gotten retinal eye exam, managing A1C. These are the things that help on a population basis to make sure that your patients have the best chance possible for being helped. So again, we're going from that artisan or craftsman model where you just sit with your head down seeing one patient at a time to where you've got practice programs which are looking at all of your patients, finding where there are deficiencies or problems with the care that they've achieved. Maybe not from your fault, maybe because they didn't come in. We're helping you find those. We are working on getting the best chance for good health for your patients. We're working with you to do it and you get the bonuses associated with that. Here's some misincentive programs, clinical performance incentives, patient experience incentive, which you see in things like apps, and coding incentives. There's major problem. Coding's a nightmare. It's a headache. I hate coding, but you got to do it. And we teach you how to do it. We know how to do it and we help you along that space. Here's some clinical performance measures and the PMPM associated with those. Remember PMPM? Capitation per member per month. Uh, for provider groups average on the star rating, 3.5 stars or less, zero. 3.5 to 3.74, $3. 4.75 and higher, $16. So again, this is a bonus based on the quality that you're providing to your patient. This is the end of this part. We'll do information on patient experience surveys and coding submission incentives in the last part, getting your practice off that treadmill. Getting you off the fee-for-service treadmill, you and your practice and your patient. This is part three, where you actually talk about some uh, practice valuation concerns, as well as a lot of the technical information with uh, bonus programs and uh, different types of clinical parameters that your practice needs to be watching and performing to, and of course, we can help you get. So again, get off the treadmill, recognize that fee for value is not the future, it's here now, and if you're not there, you're in a world of hurt, and it's gonna get bigger. It's gonna go from the current 48%, hopefully to 100%. That's what Medicare's target is, and it's because it's better for your patients. It gives them into prevention, population-based care. It's better for you because it gives you time the evenings and weekends with your family, and it's a heck of a lot more value valuable to you. But it's hard. You've got to understand all of the alphabet soup ranging from HEDIS, CAPS, and HOS to CCM, RPM, and TCM, and Part A, Part B, C, and D. You've got to understand how to do the transition from fee-for-service into incentive programs, shared savings, and even full risk model. There's an easy way to start that. We've got programs, we've done this before, for extremely large organizations, 80 to 150,000 full risk covered lives performing consistently at five star, the highest level of quality. It's really simple. You just contract with us, continue to do your work. We do the rest, you make more money, and we also, while we're working with you, teach you how to perform better in this space. So now we're gonna get into valuation programs. And here's the thing, typical practice valuations, again, this is not some, this is typical. Practices are leaving half a million dollars on the table. Now, what do you say to that? You provide better care for your patient. Your patient is less sick, they're healthier. You go home at night and on the weekends, you're not working on charts and you have half a million more in value. What's not to like about this program? So we will provide, Medicare has recently released and made public all of their data. There's one group, and I don't know if I should say the name or not, Precision Value Based Healthcare. I guess I did. They're going out saying that nobody else has access to this data. It's public data. We have access, other folks do too. What these groups like us can do is evaluate your practice to tell you how much you're missing, what you're leaving on the table. 
both financially and in terms of quality. Now, the finances are driven by the quality. Here's an example. It's an early bonus program. It's called Upside Only. There's no risk for, of losing money on your side. It's the Partnership for Quality, PFP4Q program. 22, 2022 program, it's Upside Only designed. This is a Cigna program, for example. It's designed to, uh, to collaborate help docs provide better care and pay them for doing it. It has to do with COVID-19 vaccination education. Patients still make their own choice. CP2T2 coding submissions, clinical performance measures, and patient experience set surveys. Now, what are some of the clinical performance measures that you have to hit? Tons of stuff coming off of HEDIS. All-cause readmission. 